Hi, recently there has been a great deal of attention on power factor correction, especially in digital domain, presumably for the EV market. Therefore, in this short video, we're going to show how you design a digital PFC and we're going to use a free software called PLD and we're going to design a real one based on a STM32 microprocessor using this software. The link for the download is below and of course we will show the link again at the end of the video. So in order to design a PFC, obviously we're not going to do the complete thing in a five to ten minute video. We actually run a workshop which allows you to do this. The link will be below and also at the end of the video. But in effect, effectively you need to take care of three things. First, you need to select your components and make sure that they are the right values, they've got the right stresses and are not going to blow up. And then a PFC, typically the most popular one, has got two loops. An outer voltage loop, which is usually slow, we're going to talk about how we design that and a current loop which is in a, inside of the voltage loop and that is much faster and again we're going to talk about that and then finally we're going to go to the test rig and we're going to show you the experimental verification on the same board that we use in our workshops so that we prove that what we have done <coughs> is working. In order to ease the design, we have de uh, developed a software called PLD and that takes care of all of these and makes the process much, much easier. It, it selects the components, it gives you the coefficients for the voltage loop and the current loop based on your specification and finally um, creates a chunk of coefficients which you can paste into your code. Again, the code we make available not only to the workshop, uh, attendees but also at the end of this video so that you can have a have a play. So um, let us now go to the setup, I show you the software and then we design a PFC together. Okay uh, so the first thing that we're going to uh, look at is going to be the uh, PFC circuit, the digital PFC circuit that we are going to use. This is the one that we have designed specifically for our workshops. Now as you can imagine um, the input to a PFC circuit, uh, power factor correction stage is 230 volts typically and the output is typically around 400 volts. We run hands-on workshops and it is not a good idea to uh, kill the customers and therefore uh, we have lowered the voltage of this unit. We have designed it specifically for our workshops and we have divided everything by a factor of 10. So the input voltage is 23 volts and the output voltage is around 40 volts. So everything is factored down. There's a, there is a small transformer down here that takes the mains voltage, brings it down to 23 volts sinusoid, and then we uh, give us a, give, give an, a DC output of around 400. And we are using an STM32 microprocessor in order to do all the calculations and all the sampling and, and basically run the, DF, uh, the, the PFC algorithm. Um, as a result, we can run hands-on experiments for everybody during the classes without having dangerous voltages. This is a two-phase interleaved uh, PFC that we run in the class, but for now, for this demo, I'm only going to use one of the phases. So, so one of the phases is off and the other one is on. Uh, the microprocessor is doing all the calculations. This cable is only powering up the uh, ST micro and I'm going to later on show you the waveforms. But for now, how do we go about designing the, uh, the actual um, PFC stage? We are going to use a software called uh, PLD. Uh, the SD version of this is completely free from the uh, link below, unlimited uh, and free, and it works for the SD microprocessor. Uh, and it allows you to design almost every aspect of a uh, continuous conduction mode boost PFC. Now the first thing that we do when we run this software uh, is uh, um, you, you, you type in the design parameters. Um, the voltages have been reduced to 24 volts uh, because we are stepping down to 24 volts so that in our workshops we have safe voltages but in real life obviously you are going to work with universal voltages so the minimum input voltage that will let's say be typically uh, 85 uh, then nominal will be around 230 for the EU standard and then maximum let's say it will be 270 volts 
um, and that is a universal voltage. Line frequency is uh, 50 hertz uh, for the uh, European Union, uh, or 60 for, let's say, the United States or Canada. Uh, and uh, let's say you can change the power range, let's say 250, um, uh, 250 uh, watts or uh, one kilowatt or whatever. And as you change these parameters, the software will automatically calculate the component values, the stresses, and also the loop uh, um, coefficients. The switching frequency for the, this board, which we use in the workshop, is 200 uh, kilohertz. And typically, the output voltage of a PFC, as I mentioned earlier, is 400 volts. And then you've got something called the hold-up time. Now, when you design a PFC, the hold-up time is specified, and that is how long you're going to allow the input voltage to go down. And during this period, let's say 15 milliseconds, the output of the PFC cannot fall below a certain level. So you need to specify this, these two things, the hold-up time, how much the voltage can be down for, and during this period, how low the output of the PFC can get in order to size up the capacitor. Obviously, if your hold-up time is long, the capacitor will have to be bigger for the same drop in the voltage. So in here, we have got a hold-up time of 15 milliseconds, and during that period, let's say you allow the voltage to fall, output voltage to fall from 400 volts down to 330 volts. And when you type these in, the uh, software will automatically calculate the value of the capacitance and pretty much all the other components around it. So, um, I'm going to put these back to the values that we use, the safe low voltages that we use in, in the workshop. But for your own, obviously, you'll be using uh, real line voltages. And this is the specification of this PFC. So the input voltage is 24 volts because we are stepping down with a, with a transformer. Uh, line frequency is 50 hertz uh, in, in Europe. Uh, 25 watts is the load resistors that you get to play with here for your uh, transient response. 200 kilohertz switching frequency, 40 volts output voltage because again, I've, I've stepped everything down by a factor of 10. And after 15 milliseconds, I'm going to allow the voltage to drop from 40 volts to 33 volts. Now, we're going to design a power stage. So if you go to the power stage tab, the first thing that it asks you is how much ripple you're going to allow on the inductor current. Um, here is percentage ripple current with respect to the peak of the current. And 8% allows you a certain amount of ripple around the inductor current, and of course that determines the size of the inductor. So you type in 8%, and that calculates the size of the inductance. There we go. Uh, PLD has calculated the size of the inductor, and I have soldered in 100 microhenries, which is a little bit smaller, and that just means that my ripple is going to be bigger than I actually expected. And the capacitance has already been calculated. I have actually soldered exactly um, 2.4 millifarads worth of capacitance, and that was designed based on the previous tab with the hold-up time. Then, we need to specify the current sense circuitry. Now, in this particular board, because the voltages are low and the currents are low, we are just using a sense resistor. But typically, you need a current sense transformer in a real system. So here, it asks for the software asks for current transformer turns ratio one to something. Because it's a resistor, obviously, then it will be one to one. If you have a current transformer of, let's say, one to 50, you type in 50 here, and based on that, the software calculates everything else. The next thing you have to answer is the voltage drop across the burden resistor. So if you've got a current sense transformer, you typically have a burden resistor, and a voltage appears across that, which is proportional to the current. <clears throat> now, um, let's say that you want to have a voltage drop at the peak of the current of one volts, you type that into here, and then the software calculates the size of the burden resistor. So I'm saying I'm going to allow a voltage of one volt to appear across the burden resistor. My transformer has got a turn ratio of one to one because I don't have a transformer, it's a resistor. And based on that, the software calculates the size of the resistor, the current sense resistor, which in my case is 700 milliohms, which is exactly what I have soldered on this board. 
Then finally, the software gives me the current gain in volts per amp. In other words, how many volts will appear across the burden resistor or a current stress resistor per amp that flows. Now, because the software is going to design the control loops for you, you actually don't need to worry about this number, but at least you know it if you're going to design the loops manually. This is one of the parameters that you need for designing of the control loop. The next thing, we are going to talk about how much harmonics we're going to allow on the line currents. And of course, that determines whether we pass or fail the uh, standard. And one of the, one of the uh, sections of the PFC is called the voltage feed forward filter. Now, the voltage feed forward filter is also being designed by uh, the software. And what we're saying is that we are going to allow 0.5%. 75% of third harmonic on the line current as a result of the voltage feed forward filter. The issue is that when you design the voltage feed forward filter, that is the same in analog and digital implementations of the PFC, is that some harmonics will creep via the voltage feed forward filter into your line current. So you need to limit this. And here you say you don't want to have any more than 0.75. And based on that, the software calculates the cutoff frequency of the voltage feed forward filter, which in our case, because you want no more than 0.75, it's 10 hertz. So you are going to design a voltage feed forward filter of cut with the cutoff frequency of 10 hertz. And that is going to be a second order Butterworth filter. Now, then you have to work out what is the sampling frequency of this digital filter? Now, typically in a power supply, we sample at the switching frequency, which in our case is 200 kilohertz. However, if you have got a filter with a cutoff frequency of 10 hertz and you sample at 200 kilohertz, when you do your bi um, uh, bilinear transform, you get really silly numbers and the microprocessor cannot calculate them because some of the numbers will be very big, some of them will be very small. Therefore, we're going to sample the voltage feed forwards coefficients much slower. We talk about this in much more detail in our workshops, but for now, instead of 200 kilohertz for the filter, I'm only going to sample at six kilohertz. And based on that, the software calculates all the coefficients that I need for the filter. All I have to do is type it, uh, copy to clipboard and type it into my code. There we go. I've copied it. And that is it. That is the coefficients of the voltage feed forward filter. And again, the code we will make available, not only to everybody who comes to the workshop, but also from the link below, you can download it and you can see how the code for a PFC actually works. The digital PFC actually works on the ST micro. So the software has so far calculated the sizes of the capacitors, the sizes of the inductor, and calculated the uh, voltage feed forward filters coefficient. So next step is to look at the voltage loop. The, uh, this type of PFC has got a slow outer voltage loop and a fast inner current loop. The, out, the voltage loop is, has to be a slow um, because if you make a high crossover frequency fast voltage loop, it will start interfering with the current loop. And of course, the job of the PFC is to clean up the current, make the current look sinusoidal. This is only to give you a little bit of regulation on the output voltage. So typically the crossover frequency of the voltage loop is extremely slow. And in our case, we're designing for seven, seven to 10 Hertz is very typical for the outer voltage loop. I'm wanting uh, 50 degrees of uh, phase margin. And only based on these two numbers, the, uh, Software has already calculated the poles and zeros. It also gives me the estimation of how much third harmonic I'm going to get on the, uh, on the line current. And based on this, most importantly, it has calculated for me the uh, coefficients of the voltage loop. Again, I can copy that into the clipboard. I can paste it in my code. Again, the sample of the code is available from the link below or at the end of the video, we give you all the links uh, to, to download these, the, the, these um, um, programs. And voltage loop is also designed. Yeah? Finally, we have to design the current loop. 
As I mentioned earlier, the current loop has to be fast because the job of the current loop is to shape the current and get rid of the harmonics. So instead of 7 Hz, you can see that the crossover frequency of the current loop is in fact 10 kilohertz. So it's a nice fast loop. I'm asking for 50 degrees of phase margin. The, uh, switching, the sampling frequency is the same as switching frequency at uh, 200 kilohertz. And you need to specify how long your code is taking from the time that you sample the current to the time that you update the PWM. Again, in our workshops, we, did, we tell you in detail how this is calculated, but the sample code that you can download, it is taking 0.3, of one sampling interval, okay? And again, based on the information that you have typed in, it has calculated the poles and zeros, you copy them to clipboard, you paste it in your code, and now your uh, current loop is also designed. So you can see that the software has calculated the components, voltage feed forward, voltage loop, and the current loop. So let's have a look and see how this compares with the real measurement. So I'm just going to have first look at the voltage loop. This is the loop. I designed for 7 Hertz crossover frequency and 50 degrees of phase margin. You can see that at least in simulation, it's absolutely perfect. But what about the measurement? Now measuring the voltage loop um, is easy in terms of the setup, but you need, because you're measuring very low frequencies, you need an injection transformer that needs to be big and heavy. Now this particular one from Omicron goes down to one hertz and is 1.3 kilos, right? And because any, if you have a lighter um, uh, transformer, then at low frequencies, the core will saturate. So um, there are videos already online that we have done on how you measure the voltage loop and current loop. So we won't measure them again, but I will show you the results. So if I look at the voltage loop here, the real measurement for this board using a Bode 100 and this transformer is 6.8 hertz. Simulation is 7, so I designed for 7, I get 6.8. And 49 degrees of phase margin, I designed for 50. So I have got a near perfect match between the real measurement and what the software is providing. Then let's have a look at the current loop. Here is the current. I designed for 10 kilohertz, I get 9.3 kilohertz, and I designed for 50 degrees of phase margin, and I get 54 degrees of phase margin. So again, the software is showing an excellent match with the real measurement. So our loop is designed, and the final thing to look at is the uh, waveforms here. The green trace is the current and the yellow trace is voltage, I can disable the uh, PFC. You can see as soon as I disable it, you get this classic shape, that big peaky current that, that uh, a system will take with lots of capacitors and rectification. And then I'm going to enable the PFC and you can see, there we go. This is my voltage waveform, that, which is coming from the mains. Now voltage waveform is, in my experience, never a nice sinusoid. So this is the waveform of the voltage. And of course the PFC is working beautifully in that the current is following the shape of the voltage as we've got almost unity power factor right now in this digital system. I can change the load and you can see that it stays stable and you've got a very, very, very nice shape. The loops are stable and uh, also transient response is good. Uh, power supply is stable. Uh, so uh, finally, um, obviously there is a lot more to it than in this short video. We do run workshops based on uh, PFC and also DC-DC conversion. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope that you can join us in one of these workshops and we will play with this stuff and have lots of fun.